an update on Warner Brothers Discovery's potential interest in WWE, and possibly more importantly, how the potential merger with Paramount could affect the TV deals for not only WWE, but also AEW. Plenty of details in that. Plus, Bailey has signed a new long-term contract with WWE. Got the details in that. Matt Riddle, a former WWE star, has signed with MLW after his 90-day non-compete clause has expired. Speaking of which, several former WWE stars are now free agents after their non-compete periods have been completed. One of which is Mustafa Ali, who has announced a world tour and several independent pro wrestling bookings. An update on Kenny Omega after his hospitalization for diverticulitis. And Soraya's brother works an AEW dark match. Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of professional wrestling. Let's start off talking about the latest when it pertains to WWE and Warner Brothers Discovery. Of course, significantly, they are the broadcast partners for All Elite Wrestling. Now, WWE Raw television rights are currently in negotiation with recent reports stating that it will be finalized, quote, pretty soon. As previously reported, there has been a lot of speculation that WWE is negotiating with Warner Brothers Discovery with its current TV deal set to expire in September of 2024. With the news that WBD and Paramount executives have met to discuss a potential merger, Dave Meltzer provided a new update on WWE and WBD's plans. On the latest episode of Wrestling Observer Radio, Meltzer was asked if a Raw to WBD deal was, quote, still in play, replying, quote, it's majorly in play, absolutely in play, yes. Look, you know that in the TV world, having number one has its value over having number two. In terms of cost per viewer, Raw is so much more expensive than AEW. Even if AEW has a big raise, it would still be cheaper per viewer. Also, the AEW viewer is a 13% higher money earner than a WWE viewer. There's that value too, which is rarely talked about. But in the end, WWE is still number one, and WWE also has the ability, whether on TNT or TBS, to raise the station average in terms of ratings. With AEW, it's a very successful show on Wednesday. It raises the TBS weekly average a little bit, but very little, where Raw would make a much bigger difference as far as raising the average and making the station look better in the rankings of the stations. Now, when it comes to the potential merger between WBD and Paramount, Plenty of people were wondering after the news broke yesterday how this was going to affect possible negotiations with WWE and AEW as well. As mentioned, a bit speculation that Raw could find a new home on a WBD network for September 2024. It's now been reported that Warner Brothers Discovery CEO David Zasloff met with Paramount Global CEO Bob Bakish on Tuesday in New York to discuss a potential merger. The talks may still be, quote, early and may not ultimately result in a deal, but the impact of a potential merger was discussed by Dave Meltzer on the Wrestling Observer radio show. Exploring what is um, known about the potential merger in his conversation with host Jim Valley, Meltzer stated, quote, they're in merger talks, the first stage. I don't anticipate that whatever happens, I don't think that this potential merger is going to affect potential WWE or AEW TV deals because it's going to take time to put that together. WBD will still have to make whatever decision they're going to make prior to that, number one and number two, it appears because WBD is a bigger company than Paramount when it comes to financial value. They'll be the ones making decisions anyway, so there's not going to be new people making the decisions. The story is, of course, huge, like all of these merger stories are, but as far as WWE and if Raw ends up on WBD or does AEW end up on WBD, I don't think this merger will play into that story. Now, the report by Axios, based on multiple sources, notes that the merger would not be an equal one, with WBD having almost three times the mark value of Paramount. Tony Khan has recently opened up about AEW's relationship with WBD saying that it is really strong. So what are your thoughts on the latest developments when it comes to WWE talking to Warner Brothers Discovery and this merger and all that kind of stuff? How do you think it's going to affect that? Ultimately, where do you think Raw is going to end up? Is it going to end up on TNT, TBS, FX or elsewhere? Let me know your thoughts about all of it in the comment section below. Now, some interesting contract news. Of course, we've been getting quite a lot of it recently. Charlotte Flair, Rey Mysterio, Dominic Mysterio, add Bailey to the list of talents that have re-signed with World Wrestling Entertainment. 
Now, WWE sources have claimed to Fightful that Bailey has signed a new multi-year deal with the company. Now, WWE, as I mentioned, has been rapidly locking down numerous high-level talent to long-term contracts. Bailey has been a fixture in WWE for a number of years and is well liked backstage among staff and talent. As one would expect, Bailey's contract extension is one that was seen as a priority within WWE. Of course, if we get any more details on really how many years and possibly the money involved, we'll let you know. But it is a long-term multi-year contract and Bailey is not going anywhere. Now, speaking of people that used to be in WWE now, now that are no longer with the company, Matt Riddle, his next move after his WWE release has now been confirmed. The 90-day non-compete clauses for most of the recent WWE release talent that took place on September 21st officially expired today, with the names released now officially free agents. Among those names is Matt Riddle, a former US and Raw Tag Team Champion who found success as part of the RK Bro Tag Team alongside Randy Orton. Ahead of his free agency, Riddle had been advertised for the upcoming MLW Kings of Coliseum tapings on January 6th, where he will face Anawahi family member Jacob Fatu. With Riddle's free agency officially starting today, MLW has now officially announced that Matt Riddle will be joining the company. Speaking on Busted Open Radio, Court Bauer was asked about Riddle's future with the company, saying, quote, It's open. He's going to be on virtually all of our shows going forward. Where that takes us down the road, we'll see. He's able to work for other places, just to let everyone know that. He's primarily with us. He's going to be with us. And there's going to be other stuff coming down the road that he's going to reveal on his own. But will we'll be one of his bigger focuses. So Riddle certainly looks like he's going to be doing a lot of stuff with MLW in the future. What are your thoughts on him signing with that promotion? What are your thoughts on the match against Jacob Fatu? And what are your thoughts on Matt Riddle in general? And speaking of which, we mentioned all of these free agents. And now we can go through the list of people that are officially now able to sign with any pro wrestling company of their choosing. Wrestling free agency is as hectic as it's ever been, with several notable names from AEW and WWE set to hit the open market over the first six months of 2024. But before that, there will be a race for another set of names that have been waiting for three months for the opportunity to get back into a wrestling ring. PW Insider and plenty of other outlets have reported that as of today, December 21st, 90 days have passed past since WWE released over 22 talents on September 21st, meaning their non-compete clauses have come to an end. Thus, talents such as Mustafa Ali, Dolph Ziggler, Matt Riddle, Shelton Benjamin, Emma, Elias, Top Dollar, Rick Boogs, Mace, Mansoor, Alaya, and Dana Brooke will now be able to wrestle once again, as well as negotiate with any promotion of their choosing. With their free agency now official, many of the bigger names let go by WWE have already begun lining up bookings for after the 90-day period. This includes Top Dollar, Mace, Mansoor, who will be debuting in GCW in January. Riddle, as I mentioned, has been confirmed when it comes to MLW. He signed an open contract with the company. Uh, Ziggler is going to be wrestling for the World Wrestling Council in Puerto Rico on January 20 as well. Now, this influx of wrestlers into the free agent market comes at a time when two promotions are teasing big reveals down the road. Earlier this week, TNA Wrestling President President Scott Demore teased that the promotion would be making a massive signing that would be revealed at the TNA Hard to Kill pay-per-view taking place on January 14. Meanwhile, AEW has continued its ongoing storyline with the mysterious devil figure who has continued to torment MJF over the past several months. So those names that I mentioned, where do you think they're going to land? Let me know your thoughts about that. Now, one name we mentioned was Mustafa Ali, and he has announced his future plans now that he's free and clear to wrestle once again. It's a big day for talents, as I mentioned, uh, obviously with several ending their 90-day non-compete clauses coming to an end. And Mustafa Ali is one of the most notable names to be let go, has decided to ring in the occasion in the biggest way possible. Taking to X at 12.21 p.m., a play on his non-compete being up on December 21st, Ali posted a tweet announcing the Mustafa Ali 2024 World Tour campaign. More notable, however, was a two-minute video included in the post featuring Ali speaking to fans at a political rally. Clad in a suit with a devilish-looking pin on his shoulder, Ali referred to himself as a free man and said that wrestling had fallen into the hands of leaders whom Ali believed to be corrupt and selfish, as clips of stars such as Kazuchika Okada, Alex Shelley, Mike Bailey, El Hio Del Vikingo, Will Ospreay, Swerve Strickland, Matt Cardo, and others flashed across the screen. Ali announced a campaign to rid wrestling of these corrupt leaders and become the the leader of wrestling needed. 
Shortly after the video was posted, numerous independent promotions announced Ali for upcoming matches in both January and February. Among the most notable was Ali's GCW debut, which will take place on January 12 in his native Chicago, Illinois, where he'll battle Gringo Loco. Other matches announced were for Dreamwave, where Ali will face Loco, Penta El Zero Miedo, and Bikingo in a four-way match on February 10, and a match for Prestige Wrestling on February 25 against Bailey. So certainly Ali is going to be a busy man heading into 2024. Now, a bit of an update on Kenny Omega after his recent hospitalization. AW Kenny Omega has recently been hospitalized with a serious illness that was later revealed to be diverticulitis. Omega has revealed that he's been in hospital and would be out of action indefinitely. Chris Jericho would provide an update on the December 20 episode of AW Dynamite, confirming that the plans for the Golden Jets tag team were on hold. Speaking about Omega's condition on Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer said, quote, it's been six days since Omega was hospitalized and by the way, he is doing better, but he's got a long road ahead of him. Meltzer would also reiterate that there isn't a timetable for Omega to return to in-ring action, saying, quote, I'm going to go with the idea that Omega is out for a long, long time, so I'm not going to figure him into this, when he was talking about building up challenges for AEW World Heavyweight Champion MGF, right now until later. Now, Tony Khan addressed Omega's condition at length during the Ring of Honor Final Battle Media Scrum last week, reflecting his importance to AEW. As previously noted, diverticulitis is an inflammation caused by pouches or bulges called diverticular, forming in the walls of the large intestine slash colon. Now, common symptoms include severe abdominal pain, nausea, and high temperatures. We wish Omega the best. Of course, it was actually reported that it was a pretty close call and had Omega not been hospitalized when he was, it could have been much more serious if they left it any any longer. So if we get any more updates on Kenny Omega, of course, we'll let you know in the future. Finally, Soraya's brother took place uh, in his first AEW match at the tapings last night. It was not the best of nights, of course, for Soraya yesterday at AEW Dynamite as she was defeated by Riho in a match to determine timeless Tony Storm's challenger for the AEW Women's World Championship at AEW World's End later this month. But while Soraya was having her woes, a family member was getting the opportunity he's been waiting for for a very long time. Before last night's Dynamite, Soraya's brother, Zach Zodiac, worked a dark match, wrestling and defeating Peter Avalon in singles action. It's unclear if this match was an official tryout for Zodiac, who is in the United States touring for the next month after obtaining a work visa in the fall, and if he'll be working any more AEW dates moving forward. This was not Zodiac's first appearance in an AEW ring, as the 32-year-old could be seen at All In, celebrating along with the rest of their family, uh, obviously with Soraya's AEW Women's World Championship victory over Hikari Rashida, Britt Baker, and Tony Storm at the events. Zodiac and Soraya had previously talked with AEW owner Tony Khan about Zodiac working on AEW shows, with Khan promising Zodiac he'd get an opportunity with the promotion once he made it to the States, a promise that seemingly Khan has fulfilled. Now, a 22 veteran who began wrestling at just 10 years old, Zodiac has largely competed on the British independent scene, most notably the past two years for Revolution Pro Wrestling. He has long attempted to break out of the scene and tried out for the WWE six times during his career, most recently recently in 2020. His struggles to get signed along with Soraya earning a contract in the early 2010s were chronicled in the film Fighting With My Family. But there you go, guys. This latest pro wrestling news for you. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe button right hand corner. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and I'll speak for you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.